Greetings, fellow citizens. I'm Orbital Jeffo. I recently had decided to start a episodic check-in series that tracks and highlights star citizen progress on my incredibly new and unseasoned YouTube channel. I wasn't planning on making another video for several more months. In fact, my goal was to focus my energy elsewhere until Star Citizen had made another major stride, or at least keep up with development on a quarterly basis. Now, today, I decided to throw all of that out the window, at least for now, after I spent some time in the PTU version 3.15. Before I begin, though, if you're interested in keeping up with my quarterly Is Star Citizen Making Progress series, then be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't lose me in that ocean of YouTube. Now let's get into it. Here we are at Star Citizen PTU version 3.15. So immediately I noticed the difference that instead of just asking you to choose a location, the game's asking you to choose a primary residence. And much like before, this is the only time you're going to be presented with this screen, so think carefully before choosing Orison, since you'll be making that climb out of the atmosphere every time you depart. I almost chose Loreville, or Area 18, but I went ahead and chose New Babbage, despite my real-life aversion to the cold. Now, I'm a desert guy now, but I actually grew up in Colorado, and believe me, I don't miss having to start my car 30 minutes early just to be able to leave in the mornings. But since this is video game magic, I picked a place that, at least aesthetically, speaks to me the most. Now, just as always, we open by waking up in our habitation bed. Now, right away this time, I decided to start by checking out the new inventory system. I had most of my rewards and other gifted items immediately available. However, all of my previously purchased in-game items were gone, probably due to the wipe. Now, this left me without pants and shoes, but I did have several flight suits to choose from. Now, the personal outfitting screen within the MOBA glass that we're so used to is gone entirely, but you can access the inventory screen easily enough through your inner thought wheel or by pressing I on your keyboard. Now, something that might not be immediately apparent with this new inventory system is just how container-based it is. For example, the inventory system that you see on screen now are the items that I currently have stored in New Babbage. If I don pair a pants or armor with storage space, I'll get a second box which I'm able to transfer items to. If I board a ship, I'll see that ship's box on the screen as well. Now we're used to our items always traveling with us. We just open up the Moby Glass, pick what we want to use or wear, and that's it. Those days are over, and we're going to need to plan ahead. Unfortunately for me, I learned this a little too late in this playthrough because I traveled all the way from Microtech to Hurston and arrived with only the clothes on my back. I didn't even have my helmet. Now this is going to mean that we're going to need to factor in what items we want to bring with us during gameplay and also where we want to keep our items stored. <laughs> now, I actually set myself on a bit of a wild goose chase trying to rebuy pants, shoes, and the Novikov armor. <laughs> Ultimately, I ended up forgetting the shoes anyway, so I just stayed in my flight suit for the majority of the video. But it did afford me the opportunity to reacquaint myself with New Babbage and Port Tressler. <laughs> Here I am in New Babbage, showing off my abs and my package to the entire store. <laughs> Ever hear of changing rooms? Now, I know a lot of you out there are excited about the new medical gameplay, so it ended up being the perfect opportunity when I accidentally killed myself by going outside without a helmet. It allowed me to get a perfect preview of hospital gameplay, and it was a lot more immersive than I'd previously imagined. So after collapsing into a ball of death in the vacuum of space, I awoke in a nice, clean hospital room. Now, I didn't know that, according to lore, when you die, you aren't just resuscitated, you're reanimated in a cloned body. So the computer informs me of this and then allows me to take over my medical care. Now, the system said I didn't have any injuries or need any treatment, but it did allow me to play around with the medication administration system. Now the first option I noticed was the ability to set where you want to regenerate. 
Uh, this is a feature that you've been able to do previously, like with the Carrick bed, but now it seems uh, a much more prolific feature. Medical gameplay brings us several new injectable medications, Demexetrine, Sterigen, Roxifen, Resurgera. The system shows us a blood drug level meter, and, as well as how much would be toxic. There's also a cool down or effect duration period. I gave myself some Roxifen, which is apparently the game's opioid pain reliever. There's even a medication for counteracting overdoses. I'm assuming that if the system did detect injuries, then checking the auto-med box there would administer the correct medications, but where's the fun in that? I have to admit I'm a little disappointed that the new Babbage style hospital gowns don't have a giant slit down the back with one butt cheek hanging out. You know, just for comic effect. The full-size hospitals are absolutely huge, and I actually found myself getting lost there for a moment. But I eventually made my way back down to the lobby. They're actually kind of laid out like the apartment building. Now prior to leaving the hospital, I purchased several pieces of medical equipment at the pharmacy. Included in these purchases were the new medical beam that was previously announced to some criticism. Now, I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but it comes as a multi-tool attachment. It looks kind of promising. There's also a standalone medical gun as well. This will all really come in handy for those who want to play as a medic or a rescuer, or who want to work on a larger ship helping out their fellow crew members during battle. I, I also discovered that the that. space stations have their own scaled-down version of the hospital ward on board, which is definitely going to be useful. As you can see here, it looks like you can change your preferred uh, regeneration point. If you want it at your primary residence facility or this specific uh, clinic that I'm at now. And of course, if you've got some bumps and bruises, you can just check on in, head to a patient room. As far as any criticisms go, I have very few as of right now. I'd like to see a way to better keep track of my various equipment that might get strewn about the galaxy. I know this doesn't fit with the broad definition of realism, because it's easy to lose things in real life, but in the scope of the game, this would make for easier play. Perhaps the new Nix and Nax app does this already, but since I didn't think to play more with it, I, I don't really know. All in all, I have to admit that this is the most excited I've been for an update in a very long time. We'll see more of this analyzed during my next planned installment of Is Star Citizen Making Progress, but I wanted to get these early thoughts out there while this PTU was still going. I also know that more star systems are on the horizon, so that's also something to look forward to. Say what you will about me, but I just had to have another go at that medication administration system.
I know this has been a long road, and there was a time I, I wouldn't have imagined making a video like this. In fact, I would have scoffed at a video like this, but if there ever was a time for Star Citizen optimism, I really think it is now. I'll just leave it at that. Now, if you made it this far in the video, please show my fledgling channel a little support and hit that like button. And if you think you'd want to see me again, please feel free to subscribe. I'm Orbital Jeffo. Thank you for watching, and as always, please be sure to be kind to one another out there. We'll see you next time.